Professor and analyst Mexican specialist. Mexican professor and analyst specialist in international relations, Alfredo Gerraje, it wrote in 2015 that the planet is fracturing accelerately in the midst of the. Uh, uh, chaos. A new fact uh, has confronted the Russian Federation and Ukraine, a former socialist republic, enemies now through Crimea. Russian forces captured three Ukrainian ships, and Moscow justified saying that everything was made in strict conformity with uh, international law, and Ukraine on its side with a statement of Poroshenko accused its neighbor to, of invasion. It's not the first time it does it the accusation. And uh, the foreign affairs uh, official of the European Union, uh, Federica Mogherini, uh, talked in favor of what they uh, deem uh, Ukraine's uh, territorial uh, unity and uh, uh, does not acknowledge elections. Are doubts uh, good to uh, know? Is it this only to uh, clear marine routes or to or or is Russia uh, imposing coercive measures and even uh, reach uh, the G20 summit in Buenos Aires with questions? What consequences would uh, an imminent war in these seas have for the, this region? Is this a casus belli to isolate Russia? We will start analyzing this case. More details on what uh, uh, happened in this fresh news. The Azov Sea, the Russian army, uh, captured uh, two ships with 24 seamen that illegally entered uh, its exclusive economic waters address to Kerch Strait. They pretended to uh, stay there, even uh, taking out guns in spite of the Russian uh, warnings. For this reason, Russia. Uh, allegates that it was in strict uh, uh, adherence to international law. Ukraine, uh, in its turn, says that Russia is affecting its sovereignty. Ukrainian uh, parliament uh, uh, passed Poroshenko's uh, measure to uh, put special measures for 10 days. It is called the most serious uh, sea event in the last months. In yesterday's event, this was a definite provocation. Everything that we must say was said by the security service of the Russian uh, Federation in the Foreign Affairs Minister of our repre official representative. A key principle of international law has been violated, not only the sea law, but general international law, including the UN Charter. We will look at the counterparty now. I call upon the Russian Federation authorities to immediately free Ukrainian militaries that were uh, brutally uh, arrested against international law. We demand their immediate return to Ukrainian side and an immediate reduction of the situation in the Azov Sea and in other directions. I ask for a quick response. I fear that after Western countries with uh, particular influence in Ukraine truly show this attitude. The Ukrainian side could feel a little animated, uh, encouraged to perpetrate new provocations of this kind. Any reproaches from the Western side uh, is clearly linked to the perspective of Ukrainian uh, elections and directly linked to the fall of Poroshenko, President Poroshenko's ratings. Other elements from other web pages.
Consejo de Seguridad de Naciones Unidas UN Security Unidas, Council blocks the Russian agenda on confrontation Kers, with Ukrainian Kurds. Maneuver to cancel presidential elections of 2019. One of the titles uh, on this note of RT. Permanent joint uh, representative of the UN Security Council said that President Poroshenko has lost the trust of Ukrainian people and pretends to cancel elections set far for March 31st, 2019 by imposing the martial law, which came after the confrontation in the Strait of Kerch. And uh, the perfect excuse has been this uh, naval clash uh, this weekend. I will now go to La Vanguardia in Spain under the title, Tension between Russia and Ukrainian grows in the Azov uh, Sea by Gonzalo Aragonés, journalist. Y tenemos el siguiente extracto. With the following abstract, uh, in view of Pereshenko's wish to build a military base at Denaso before 2019 ends, the Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs of Russia assured last week that Russia does not plan to militarize the sea, but argued that it has no other step to increase its presence because of an alarming presence created in Ukraine and to guarantee the Crimea bridge, but this, of course, is a national security matter. I will now connect with our correspondent from Moscow, Hansel Loro. Greetings for you and our audience. A new escalate of tensions between Russia and Ukraine came out after uh, the capture of these uh, ships in ter Russian territorial waters in front of Crimea uh, in the Black Sea that had no authorization to go to the Azov Sea. This information is provided by the Russian security uh, services. During the interrogation to three members of the crew of Ukraine proved that uh, this was a provocation by Kiev government who uh, uh, told the ships to continue their uh, route in spite of, of the warnings uh, made by Russian guard posts that were forced to use uh, the weapons with which they wounded three members of the Ukrainian crew who are well now. What implications could uh, this have? The first uh, is uh, in case of the martial law being decreed by uh, Poroshenko uh, for 60 days that should end on January 25, and then uh, uh, they would only approve a 30-day term to avoid uh, uh, interfering in elections. Re Putin, in a telephone conversation he held with uh, uh, German uh, min uh, Prime Minister Angela Merkel, said that uh, the increase of tension in uh, Ukraine uh, and as of the uh, Russian borders were reinforced by uh, increasing uh, uh, militaries with the support of the NATO member countries. The General Secretary of NATO said that Russia should return the three ships retained by Russian guard coasts on the Kursk Strait and repatriate the uh, Marines. These investigations will continue, and they also talked about uh, the anti-Russian feeling that has, this has created in the West to uh, seek sanctions against Russia and uh, strengthen the existing ones because we know that Russia has strategically sought to enter the uh, natural gas uh, produced in Russia to Europe with this uh, a new gas stuff from Napa to the Turkish coast and then for, uh, for 180 kilometers distributed to different European countries as of 2019. There's also the North Stream 2 project that, for, of the, uh, that would go from uh, Russia to, through the 
the Baltic Sea to Germany. Uh, Perotenko plays with these restrictions and uh, tries to avoid Russian flourishing and gas stocks that uh, are appearing. We must also value the relations with the Azov Sea, and the uh, United States are talking about the alleged uh, militarization by Russia, which has been completely denied by the authorities of Air this nation. Entonces, preguntarse we must now ask uh, what uh, would be the possible consequences of an imminent conflict between Ukraine and Russia in shared waters of a soft and black sea. Inside of Ukraine with elections in March uh, 31st, 2019. How decisive is this fact uh, in Ukrainian policy? Only two of the questions we want to make uh, uh, today to our guests will uh, uh, after this pause. Sputnik News Agency has this title regarding the question we made. Crimea Congressman excludes the possibility of a war between Russia and Ukraine. We were asking about consequences of this dispute. The Duma uh, Russian uh, side, uh, Congressman Mikhail Shelemed excluded the possibility of an open conflict between Russia and Ukraine, and out of the imposing martial law is only a political intrigue of Kiev's authorities. Let's review uh, the weekend's uh, events. Grosso modo, this, it was this that happened. According to the Federal Security uh, Service of Russia, Ukrainian uh, warships invaded uh, Russian waters without license and dangerously maneuvered, even if Russian authorities sent early alerts, alerts of civil uh, or navigation. Ukraine uh, Ukraine was uh, based on an agreement of 2003 that allows the shared use of the Azov Sea. Nevertheless, such agreement says that uh, military authorizations must warn uh, these moves before. A point came where the crew uh, took out its artillery and took its cannons at 41 degrees, pointing at Russian ships. Russia blocked uh, them. Uh, at the Kirsch uh, uh, Strait, and on November 25, uh, one of the Russian ships opened fire and uh, took over three Ukrainian ships. Many are talking about the bilateral uh, danger because of uh, the Crimea's annexion to Russia and talked about its uh, vital importance because of its near the uh, Black Sea Basin and has uh, the mar marine and commercial port of Sevastopol. Russia said that Ukraine ships invaded their territory and Ukraine responded by enforcing martial law for 30 days. Crimea belonged to Russia on three occasions. Greetings, and I welcome Jose Antonio Esquido, sociologist and Vasco Venezuelan uh, investigator. Let's start by uh, describing the zone we're talking about. In military, economic, and geostrategic terms, we assume there's a very uh, important uh, point. Well, all the zones of the world uh, have are very uh, important. This is part of the Black Sea where uh, 
another small sea, the uh, soft sea opens, that uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago was a Soviet sea. And uh, in those coasts, two socialist uh, Soviet sisters, Soviet republics, uh, cohabited. Uh, that was uh, Ukraine and Russia. This ended, of course, uh, 30 years uh, behind when the Soviet Union crumbled and capitalism was established. And the situation was aggravated in 2014 when the extreme right supported by the United States took the power in Ukraine with a completely anti-Russian feeling. It was long said that uh, one of the most important brains of uh, U.S. Uh, foreign policy, Brzezinski, had said it before in a book that is called The Great uh, World uh, Board, that in order to control Russia, uh, they had to control Ukraine, and by that, they would control Eurasia, two continents, which was like controlling the world. So uh, these were two successive coups, uh, uh, the fall of the Soviet Union and then the takeover of the right of Ukraine uh, is where these tensions come from, of two peoples that uh, have been uh, uh, fraternal in the socialist veterans and culturally as well, because uh, the Russian culture historically uh, came many century uh, uh, many centuries ago from Ukrainian land. It's a drama that uh, US and Western policy had confronted uh, two uh, sister-like nations, tensions that uh, divide uh, historically bounded uh, territories. I want uh, to ask you if, in your opinion, is a perfect excuse or a casus bellus to try to isolate Russia or, for example, to uh, uh, reach uh, a question to the next uh, summit of the G20 in Buenos Aires. Well, undoubtedly, since 2014, when I insist the ultra-right wing took a power after some terribly violent incidents in Kiev, I remember very well the U.S. ambassador supporting the uh, people who took the power in arms as of 2014, several scenarios of violence and tension uh, started. An answer given by the Russian people and government is to favor the reincorporation of the Crimea Peninsula that is adjacent to the Yasov Sea. The reincorporation of this to the Russian motherland after consult consulting the Crimean people that majoritarily decided to incorporate to Crimea. So the right wing authorities supported by the United States have uh, not acknowledged reincorporation, saying that uh, that is no longer Ukraine but Russia. Now, to enter two important ports of Ukraine, navigation needs to enter the Azov Sea and uh, the strait that has been the subject matter of this weekend's events, the Kurtz uh, Strait. Uh, it's possible that this is a continuous uh, focus of tension, and they're also talking about repeated ships that reach Crimea, and then uh, when they uh, reach uh, Ukrainian uh, ports, they are withheld. So uh, this is a tension that has uh, unleashed at this time, and that talks about open war in uh, the immediately close uh, former uh, popular uh, Ukrainian uh, republics, Donetsk and Lugansk, could be that uh, one of the reasons uh, for this incident, which is clearly responsible uh, of the Ukrainian government, is to block the military attack of Ukrainian uh, uh, militias against the popular republics of uh, Lugansk and Donetsk. It is also said that uh, surveys or ratings uh, 
are very bad for President uh, Poroshenko in the next elections of March. And this favors also because the martial law will enable him to delay elections when he sees that he's ready to win. Of course, this is not made without the authorization of the great uh, 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 of NATO and the United States that are always willing to create tensions be against Russia. I think this is uh, the context. I would like to incorporate uh, David Gomez Rodriguez, a Venezuelan analyst and writer established in Russia. Professor Jose Antonio has explained what Son we're talking about on, in military, geostrategic, and economic terms. Uh, he was explaining if we are in uh, Castle Spelis or is this just a, 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 an assembly? We agree. I agree with the uh, internal political situation of Ukraine. It is true that uh, presidential elections are coming next year where President Poroshenko feels reduced uh, because of his ratings and a complex uh, situation because uh, they are in winter and gas in Ukraine is more critical. We understand this is a political maneuver they have used uh, in order to distract uh, Ukrainian community around the creation and the tension with Russian relations uh, as a way to reach better moments inside Ukraine. It is also true that at international level, this uh, dangerous uh, move, uh, which has been the violation of Russian sovereignty, is also a direct threat to the brotherly and sisterly relations of peace and uh, these constructive relations in, in the world where the United States is playing, always playing with double standards. So we heard uh, declarations by Donald Trump say, expressing his interest with uh, the typical ironic uh, and double standard uh, way of the U.S. Uh, imperialism, uh, his will uh, for everything to be okay in this uh, tense scenario. Nevertheless, we know that behind this, there is the need to continue promoting rage against Russia and uh, scenarios where intrigue allows higher levels of uh, conflict to increase sanctions against Russia. David, uh, what uh, does uh, Ukraine play between the United States, European Union, and Russia? We must understand that the geopolitical context. Ukraine is uh, a country that has uh, had a permanent tension, rela tense relations with Russia, especially in the last years. Ukraine was part of uh, USSR, and after its fall, there has been a radical nationalistic campaign where uh, very important conflicts took place uh, that remain until this day in zones like uh, Donbass, uh, where uh, uh, there uh, the people are resisting uh, popular and uh, republic independent from Ukraine, and of course uh, with cultural, historic, economic relations with Russia. It is also important for us to analyze the role of Crimea in this scenario because uh, since 2014 when that territory, territory uh, was reinstated to Russia, 
and the bridge uh, they built uh, to this territory to have a better economic, military, and political position. We must also analyze that this stretch is very important for the uh, Ukrainian uh, and Russian economy because approximately 25% uh, of uh, the GDP crosses uh, this point and 80% of uh, also the national exports and imports. So it's very important uh, to handle this with balance because uh, it largely the future and economic stability of a country, a country depends on this, and especially the well-being of this people. Uh, the fate of citizens is uh, at stake here in a very irresponsible way, and uh, uh, calls tensions for U.S. hegemony. We cannot um, exclude from our analysis the fact that we are in a world where U.S. imperialism is uh, f being fractured increasingly and alliances between Russia and China and other countries around the world uh, are creating a new world and codifying new relations in uh, economic, military, and political terms, which uh, are uh, something which is a matter of concern of uh, U.S. imperialism. You say that uh, tensions between uh, Russia and Ukraine are functionals to uh, Western interests. You explained that uh, it is related to uh, Eurasia and the Russian Federation. Could we see these tensions uh, drop in the next hours? Although, uh, could uh, there be some inhibiting elements? The news tell us that tensions are are not only not dropping but growing because uh, the government of this anti-Russian magnate Poroshenko uh, resulting from the coup of the extreme right against uh, uh, Mr. Yanukovych in 2014 that was not exactly pro-Russian but that who was willing to have uh, reasonable good neighbor relations with his uh, uh, Russian peers, well, Poroshenko decreed the martial law in all uh, border regions uh, with Russia that are not only the Mariuporto Bartiansk ports in the Azov uh, Sea or uh, immediately close to Crimea, but all the uh, zones that uh, Ukraine has next to Russia. What he did was increase tension without justification. It would seem that Poroshenko, instead of seeking for a peaceful uh, agreement, wants to practice the Russophobia game because uh, uh, he, he knows that his godfathers of NATO, Europe, uh, Union, and the United States likes to listen to this to remain in power, receive assistance, receive uh, NATO support that is playing a role there. We hope there are, uh, that a strong movement, both uh, among the Ukrainian people and Donbass and Russian people, to uh, lower tensions and uh, for the uh, Ukrainian uh, Marines to go back home. Yesterday, uh, the UN Security Council voted, uh, which and of course, uh, Ukrainian action was condemned, but uh, at this time, tension is not dropping. And as uh, my peers said, uh, it is very important to be very responsible because Russia has a very strong military deployment uh, because it's not interested in its peoples confronting uh, Ukraine. Uh, uh, on the contrary of uh, NATO, uh, which is interested in creating uh, uh, 
an event because of the situation in Syria that stopped uh, Western expansion and the government of uh, Poroshenko and uh, extreme right forces, uh, nostalgic of uh, pro-Nazi criminals in the Second World War, which are the historic references of uh, the current Kiev uh, administration that has created this uh, huge tension. And this uh, intrigue campaign, I asked da David, and criminalization, international treaties, and uh, whatever each party interprets uh, to their convenience, I want to ask you who violated uh, declarations, conventions, or the international law according to your uh, view. First, it is clear uh, that uh, international law has been flagrantly violated when uh, they uh, entered uh, sovereign Russian territory. We uh, condemn from our points of view, and all countries should uh, uh, join us in this against any illegal incursion against any country's sovereign territory especially if we consider Russia's role in the political, economic, and military balance in the world. There's a first rupture created uh, there without uh, uh, any sanction because there is an international complicity that allows uh, NATO allies and the owners and promoters of war that uh, historically have uh, exercised fascism and double standards in uh, the international uh, politics remain in these spaces of power and continue showing a victim position. We have learned uh, that uh, in this case there has been some kind of sea uh, uh, terrorism, but we must also talk about a symbolic terrorism because this permanent attack and tension generated around Russia also has uh, sequels uh, on how we look at uh, Russia. We are looking at a huge campaign that remind us of times of uh, persecution of communism where U.S. imperialism shows its uh, uh, fear and NATO fear of a historic uh, context that has been overcome. All political forces in the world, all social movements should uh, take strong measures not only on specific uh, events like the ones we are looking at, but the uh, permanent promotion of war and conflict in the world. They are violating international law, but also the right to have psychological peace, the people's right, and harmonious relations between peoples and uh, to think in a world where we can really and truly have uh, cooperating relations for development, for culture, and education. We see that the Ukrainians were uh, 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 violating an agreement uh, executed in 2003 that uh, stipulates sharing the marine zone of the Strait and Sea, but they expressly violate one of the articles when they talk about the that uh, provides the need to inform the counterparty in case of military ships crossing, which happened in this case. Uh, an information came out that inside the ships were grenades, weapons, and ammunition that uh, were also seized by Russia. We believe that uh, calm must be maintained, but also there should be a strong position of not accepting these levels of uh, 
violation uh, of international law and that uh, they must assume strong positions in favor of the people's sovereignty. Thank you very much for your presence, David Aninaki, on essential topics to understand what is happening in the world. David was telling, uh, talking about a complicity international uh, system that uh, favors uh, the uh, uh, attackers. We are going to analyze uh, and uh, think if this is a provocation to uh, uh, carry out unilateral uh, measures against Russia at the times when we have uh, a G20 summit at Portus. We will uh, root our analysis in the last part of our critical move after the pause. In order to understand how things are handled, tensions, crisis, and curse, we wonder casus bellis to isolate Russia. Sputnik Russian Agency uh, stated in August before the UN uh, General Assembly meeting in New York said uh, Ukraine promises unpleasant surprises for Russia at the uh, UN. In a press conference, conference on August 20, 25, the uh, Ukrainian representative before United Nations said Russia ha will have unpleasant surprises regarding Crimea and Donbass. Perhaps this could be elements to keep developing. The Azov Sea is the geographic scenario of this crisis, crucial for iron uh, exports in Ukraine. And uh, united to the Black Sea through the Strait of Curse, where uh, uh, a 19 kilometer long was uh, inaugurated by Russia. This increased tensions, this is nothing new, but let's look at the map. The Strait of Kerch is a sea, a strait that connects the Azov Sea with uh, the Black Sea. And so it has uh, 4.5 and 15 kilometers long and 18 uh, uh, deep. Two extremes of the strait are united by uh, ferries. Ferries serve the transportation of passengers, alternately yields, and trains. Ferries make a journey between Port Krim, Crimea, and Port Kavac in Russia. The Azov Sea is in a European almost fresh uh, 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 water. It also has a huge amount of uh, oil and gas deposits located between Russia and Ukraine, surrounded by both countries, and the peninsula of Crimea to the west. It has 360 kilometers long and 180 wide. It has uh, uh, it's the flattest uh, sea of the world, and it has uh, several rivers of affluence. At present, most uh, ships uh, carry coal from Donetsk, uh, iron, metals, grains, metal, and salt. The Volgadon Canal made it more important because it connected uh, the Don River with the Volga and therefore Moscow with the Caspian Sea. We will now retake our questions before the pause. The United States, immediately after learned uh, of the incident, uh, urged Russia to liberate the Ukrainian ships. Uh, uh, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley declared that Russia should immediately cease its illegal conduct and respect uh, Ukrainian uh, navigation rights. France, uh, uh, Netherlands, Poland, Sweden, and the U.K. also expressed the same, one after the other. 
Southern Diaspora of Russia to reestablish the past in the Kursk Strait and uh, the parties to uh, calm down the situation. Netherlands and Germany, as well as a foreign affair minister of the UK, said that Europeans must act together, aligned, and mark Russia. NATO assured that the use of force uh, is unjustified by Russia. China in its turn uh, asked the parties to uh, use dialogue to settle differences. From uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, we have uh, Jorge Luis Huertani, international analyst. Positions against Russia are not a few. We have learned uh, mistrust. Uh, should we think there's something behind, uh, against Russia, I mean, behind this event? Good afternoon to all. I can say that. Hegel said that history uh, always repeated, and Marx said that uh, history appears as a tragedy first and a comedy later. And I think this is uh, happening in several places of the world. I want to compare this what happened with North and South Korea in the 1950 war. 1950 to 1953, since the United States wanted to occupy China that had its revolution in 1949 in October, they provoked in North Korea uh, through the government of Kim and Ri imposed by the United Nations that the uh, United States conducted uh, as, at its wish. And, uh, North Korea responded and this provoked uh, 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 the war of three years and so many uh, very high debt toll. And I think this is also uh, creating a confrontation between Ukraine and Russia, because as we all know, since 2013, the Ukrainian Nazi with Poroshenko at the head uh, has been provoking Russia. I think that now things are crossing the line because even if uh, talking about Korea, in spite of the conflicts with the United States, both Koreas are trying to unify. So the United States is uh, creating the confrontation against Russia through Ukraine. But Ukraine doesn't have experience with these things because uh, at a given time, uh, Russia with Lenin at uh, its head had to uh, bear with several allies and confront them. These allies were trying to destroy socialism. So uh, I think this is one more provocation of Ukraine together with the United States. And they're trying several things. First, the United States has a president that is confronting many things at the Times. He has not noticed that things have changed in the world and that he believes that he will still continue repressing people as it did before. On the other hand, the U.S. sanctions to Iran China has decided to uh, stop importing gas and oil from the United States. And on the other hand, uh, the G20 summit will take place in Buenos Aires now, where China and Russia will be on one side and the United States on the other. As we know, the uh, United States is having a commercial war with China and is preventing countries to have relations with China and Russia as well. So what Mr. Boroshenko expects is that uh, 
these events benefit uh, somehow himself or uh, the presidential elections after the martial law he just uh, issued in Ukraine and that uh, he is uh, putting many people against Russia. So there are many actors, but I must insist that history first appears as a tra tragedy and then as a comedy. So I don't think this will end in a war because they know that Russia also has atomic weapons and is prepared for any confrontation with NATO or the West led by the U.S. Pol policy. What you are explaining is very interesting. I want to know your opinion. Do you think that Do you think tensions will fall in the next hours? Could, uh, European Union, China, several countries are betting on dropping tensions because I insist Russia, you don't uh, uh, play with Russia. Russia is accustomed to the war. In the Second World War, it had 20 million uh, uh, people died, and it is prepared for any war. I don't think that uh, they can risk, uh, because of course, uh, Ukraine uh, would disappear of the map. I think things would, uh, are going to calm down, but uh, the situation is conflictive uh, within in the framework uh, I just explained and other things that are happening. The United States and NATO on one side, Russia and China on the other side. In Argentina, we are looking at this confrontation where the United States wants to intervene in Venezuela, Nicaragua, and is provoking conflicts in several countries, and now uh, they have a uh, essential ally in Brazil with fascist Bolsonaro and it wouldn't be strange to uh, carry out an expansive policy because fascism is always expansive. So, uh, I don't think, but in, in any case, I don't think they're going to uh, reach to war. But I must insist that Poroshenko is playing uh, its cards according to elections in Ukraine and is openly asking for uh, 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 an assistance of the Western countries to its aggressive policy. The United States, uh, uh, is, uh, we hope they don't reach this because uh, this confr confrontation could uh, uh, get to a world scale. I don't think they are as crazy to plan their own destruction in Ukraine. That is my thought. I hope it, it is so. Thank you very much for the time you uh, have granted us. Our guests uh, will help us uh, go to our conclusions. Each one plays its uh, uh, cards, as our guest said. The West uh, divides uh, our brotherly countries to control Russia, they need to control Ukraine, and therefore they've controlled Eurasia. The uh, weekend events has given a rise to a campaign of criminalization in order to discredit Russia for the, uh, the G20 uh, summit. Elections are also at stake. An excuse for Poroshenko when time to improve his popularity or ratings that dropped in the last month. The extreme right to remaining in power is essential to preserve this conflict. We uh, have now ended uh, today's critical move. Thank you for listening.